G'day, welcome to the channel and welcome to today's video. My name's Matt, but you will know me as WFX Malice. In today's video, we're gonna be doing an upgrade on an Acer Nitro 5 gaming laptop. Now these are a great bang for buck laptop. This particular variant has an Intel i5 11400 hex core, an Nvidia 3050 graphics card, a single 512 M.2 SSD and a measly 8 gig of RAM. But don't worry, we're gonna be fixing that up. We're gonna be pulling this thing apart and showing you how you can upgrade one of this relatively easily. Thanks to the architecture of this laptop, upgrading one of these is really simple. There's 12 Phillips head screws on the back. Once you've removed all of those, you can remove the back cover and get access to literally everything on the inside of these that you can possibly upgrade. Unlike a lot of modern laptops where you've got to disassemble keyboard, motherboard, pretty much the entire internals just to be able to get to a hard drive, they've kept things relatively simple. Once you've removed those screws, go and grab yourself a plastic pry tool or guitar pick in my case and work your way around just to release the clips. Now I found it easier to put a thinner guitar pick in near the RJ45 port and then use a thicker one to work my way around to the front of the laptop. Once you've done that, you can pretty much just run your guitar pick or pry tool the entire way along the front and that will release all the clips you need to remove the case. Just be careful when you are peeling the case back, you don't want to bend any of the clips. Once we get that case open, we can see there's two DDR4 RAM slots. This particular variant has an 8 gig stick in there. We're going to remove that and put a matched pair of 8 gigs in there, but it does have the potential of going out to 32 gig. There's a PCIe M.2, but there's also an NVMe M.2 expansion slot and the potential of putting a 2.5 inch drive in there. To remove your RAM, just go ahead and put some pressure on the retaining post and then slot your new RAM in, just taking note of the orientation of the slot in the RAM. Now you notice on this RAM stick, it didn't want to push in the first time round. If that's the case, just go ahead and release the RAM stick, lean it up on the angle and go ahead and put pressure on it until the gold contact points are no longer visible. Acer were nice enough to include the SATA adapter ribbon, which was really nice. Go ahead and remove the four screws for the hard drive retaining brackets. This is gonna allow you to either put a two and a half inch SSD or a mechanical drive. I've opted for a mechanical drive in this particular case because we are gonna put another M.2 SSD in there. Go ahead and screw the hard drive into those brackets and then go and line up the ribbon cable. You'll find it easier to put the ribbon cable in first rather than later. It's a little bit of a tricky one to get into, but just get the right angle. Go ahead and line the hard drive up with the holes that it's going to screw into and go and put a fold or a crease on that ribbon cable so it sits down nice and flush. Don't worry, you're not going to break the cable, you can put a bit of pressure on it. Return those four screws and the hard drive is now secured. Lastly, we're going to move on to the NVMe M.2, remove the retaining screw for it and slot the SSD into its place, remembering to put it in on about a 30 degree angle. Once it's thin, you can press it down and go and return that screw. Now we're ready to return the back case, but don't go and clip this on. Just soft clip everything on. Don't put any of the screws back in. We want to flip this over and do a power on test just to make sure the upgrade was successful. The RAM slotted in correctly and compatible. The NVMe is compatible and also that, that hard drive ribbon cable went in in the right way. Once we power it on, we should see the keyboard light up, which is a good sign. Then we're going to go through the boot process and just make sure everything boots up correctly. And yes, I ran into a bit of a problem. The NVMe M.2 was salvaged out of another computer that had issues. It had an operating system and these want to automatically default to the NVMe SSD. So just be aware of that if you're going to use a second hand drive, you may need to make a trip to the BIOS to go and set which hard drive you want as the default boot order. If you've liked this, please give it a thumbs up. If you're new to the channel, make sure you hit that subscribe button. Now everything boots up correctly, we can go into the operating system, see 16GB and the three hard drives. Thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next video.